Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking in Just Like That, Season 1, Episode 3, When in Rome. I wish I was in Rome and not watching this awful show. We are going to talk about it all. Thank you guys so much for all the support on the last video. It's incredible. So many new people here. Welcome. Please subscribe and leave me a comment. I got so many comments on the last one, over a thousand. It's amazing. Thank you for that. And let's get into the episode. Let's talk about what's going on. Let's talk about the overall feeling of the show and the the comments you guys left. So many excellent points. I mean, it's just one after another, mostly about what the heck did Charlotte do to her face, about Miranda's drinking problems, about the force wokeness, all of it. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, I highly recommend you go back and watch my last episode because we go into all the reason why this reboot is awful. And also, I just want to say, has Miranda always been this bad of an actress? Have I missed it? She is terrible in this season. Awful. I just, I'm blown away by how awful her acting is. I wasn't the biggest Miranda fan in the original series. I know a lot of people love her. Totally cool. I get it. A lot of people said she was a voice of reason. Great. I just personally was not a huge fan. But she is a terrible actress. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I really want you to pay attention. I mean, in everything. Everything she does, the overreaction because she's excited to see Che's show. Coming with me to their comedy concert Friday night. I am? Mm-hmm. Oh, great! The moment when Che blows the smoke in her face. All of it. Just terrible acting. So cringy, so hard to watch. Yes, a lot of it is the writing, but her acting does not help anything. Another thing I got a ton of comments on is... We are seriously missing Carrie's voiceovers. It added a fun, lighthearted explanation to things without having to do the things she's doing like in this episode. When she points to the bathroom and says, I'm going to go in here and go pee and then I'll feel bad. So I'll have to buy a coffee and then I'll have to go pee again. I mean, we don't need all that. She's talking to us like we're idiots. We don't need all that. She used to do these voiceovers that would kind of tie up loose ends, not necessarily about peeing, but just in general. And they've lost that. And it's lost its light and fluffy funness. It's, it's lost it. It's not magic. The other thing I got so many comments on is Charlotte's face. You guys, Charlotte is a beautiful woman. And I don't know what she's done to her face. I read that it was fillers. If I'm understanding correctly, I think she put too many fillers around her mouth and it made her mouth look very strange. Now, she came out and said, don't talk about her looks, but I'm sorry, it's part of it. We're, you know, people age. I'm not age shaming. It's not that. I'm just saying there's clearly something going on here, so we're going to talk about it. It's what we do. Since we're talking about Charlotte, can we just talk about how the costume people must hate her? And the reason I'm saying this is because all they can do is put her in these puffy sleeve shirts. You'll notice it now that I'm pointing it out because every single scene, it's a kind of off the shoulder like this puffy sleeve shirt. Pay attention because it's everywhere. That's all they want her to wear. So the episode starts out at the podcast. And I can tell you as somebody who listens to a thousand different kinds of podcasts ranging in subjects, this podcast sounds awful. Again, so many comments on this. I wanted to like Che. I suspended judgment. I really like the actress from Grey's Anatomy. But, oh, insufferable. You guys, absolutely insufferable. He keeps making these morning DJ like meow, 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 type quips and you don't need that if you have a good podcast. Carrie brings up zingers and Che says I'd make fun of that if you weren't mourning and then out of nowhere Carrie says thank god my husband died. Okay really is that what we're doing here? Che reminds Carrie that she has a comedy show coming up. Oh god I wish she had just skipped it. When Carrie relays this to Miranda that's where we see the terrible acting come in. Again in the original series they didn't have to hit us over the head with hey Miranda might have a thing for Che. Since the writers like to point out over and over and over and over how old we've all gotten and try to make us feel old, they want to hit us over the head with this too. So they go to the reading of the will and Gloria is there. You guys, I told you before, I don't understand her character. She overreacted at the funeral. Here we are again. I don't understand why she needed to be here. Yes, she was uh, an assistant to Big, but not necessary here. Out of nowhere, this lawyer keeps taking calls, just a plot to get him to leave the area so the ladies could talk. We find out that Big has left a million dollars to Natasha. I will give it to the writers here. I thought this was an interesting storyline. Where are we going with this? Doesn't seem like it's going anywhere later, but it's more of 
hey, Big's got some some mystery about him still. Then we go over to the Stanford and Charlotte interaction, and you guys, I don't like it. I love Stanford in the original series. He was fantastic. Don't understand him now. He's just angry over everything. But I will say in his defense, I thought Charlotte was being totally unreasonable too. He was going to join them for lunch. She didn't know about it. And she made a big deal about switching from a three top to a four top. Who cares? He's a friend. He's there. He's joining for lunch. What is the problem? If I'm going to take it a step farther and read into this more, I'm going to say this is just further proof of Charlotte not handling things correctly and Charlotte making everything about herself. The weird thing happening here is the abrupt cutting between the scenes. It didn't need to happen. They're reading of the will and this weird Charlotte and Stanford interaction. They didn't have anything to do with each other. If I'm reading into it again, I'm just going to say nobody's handling this well. Lots of surprises. There you go. I'm supposed to believe that this attorney is fighting with his wife. So he stepped away to argue with her in the same room as them. And they're dealing with this bomb of leaving Natasha a million dollars. First thought was just, how old is this Will? Was it from back when he and Natasha were together or around that time? I guess I just didn't automatically go to, oh, he's got all these secrets. But okay, he's got secrets. We'll see where this is going. I thought it was going to go somewhere interesting. But again, not to jump ahead, Natasha kind of acts surprised that she didn't know that that was going to happen either. So where are we going with this? Guys, I had to laugh at this scene because they keep hitting the very unlikable Stanford with the door. And I'm a huge Always Sunny fan. And if you know what I'm talking about, the episode where the gang dines out and Mac and Dennis are at a table and Dennis's chair isn't right. They tell him to sit on a book of matches. His chair's wobbly and he gets mad and he gets hit with the door by the waiter. We talk about Always Sunny instead because it's much more fun to cover. All right, let's get back into the episode. So Carrie's at lunch. She says she was doing well. Now I'm just one of the wives that he was taking care of. Miranda's saying, well, he did destroy Natasha's life. Miranda brings up, where's my wine? So again, hitting us over the head with the fact that Miranda has a drinking problem. Uh, yes, we see it. We know. We heard, we got it. We heard it the first couple episodes. She's got a drinking problem. Carrie says Big's gone and Natasha's back. I know it was a weird time in the series, but I actually loved those original episodes when she and Big were sneaking around together. Yes, it's awful. Don't sneak around. But I'm just saying, like, it added so much drama to the show. I found it so interesting. Okay, so we go over to Carrie. She's back at home. She's trying to guess Big's password to get in his computer to see what other surprises he's hiding. No luck on that. I'm sure it'll turn out to be some sort of dedication to her. You guys, this one's hard to talk about. I don't have much to say here, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. I'm just going to say what I said before. A lot of forced wokeness, right? I get where we're going with this. Charlotte has a child who is struggling. That's awful. It's real life. I get it. I don't want to see it here. It's it's too depressing. Speaking of depressing, Steve and Miranda. They've aged Steve about 100,000 years. 55 is not that old. They've made him completely deaf and unlikable. And obviously Miranda has to leave him because he's a big dull dud. But is this the way we're doing this? So Brady and his girlfriend are being obnoxious. I don't understand what they're doing with those characters either. Steve even brings up it's a bad idea to let them have sex at home. Gee, you think? Carrie's not sleeping, grabs Big's phone, can't find a charger. She starts going through his closet. And you guys, I ask again, why do they feel the need to make these characters so stupid? She finds a phone number, doesn't recognize it, calls it, and jumps when her own phone rings. Oh my goodness, twist of twists. It's her home number that she's called. Seriously? They had her holding two phones up to her head. Why are they being so bad with her character and why are they treating us so stupid? And Carrie goes through a wa his wallet and finds this photo of this old dog she didn't know about and it says on the back, Gordy, 85. I do remember that rings a bell from I'm thinking, remember when Aiden and Carrie were at that mountain cabin and Big showed up and he was drunk and they were playing basketball? I was thinking somewhere around there he did mention Gordo or Gordy or whatever his name is, um, an old dog. But again, it's just to show, hey, Big had secrets. Shocker. Charlotte, she's taken Rose to go help Anthony, who's running this business with hot deliver. It's called Hot Fellas Delivery Boys. She talks to Anthony about the struggles that Rose having 
Uh, and Anthony pretty much does less than nothing to help her and says she always wanted to be a dog. You know, maybe she'll grow out of this. Okay, maybe Anthony's not the right one to talk to about this. Steve and Miranda, again, Steve is wholly unlikable. She's making some ice cream topping bar. It seems to be their nightly ritual. Sounds pretty good to me. They're figuring out what to watch. Um, Carrie calls. You guys, can we spend about 14 hours to talk about how bad the fashions are here? I understand that they're at home. They're supposed to be cozy. But what is Carrie wearing here? You guys pointed out Patricia Field is not working on this series. I believe she was overdoing Emily in Paris. What's happening here? These looks are so bad. So bad. Especially Carrie's. I hate it. I hate everything about it. Okay. So they end up, she tries to talk to Natasha on Instagram. She gets blocked. They end up in a Charlotte, um, sorry, an SUV with Charlotte Miranda. They go, they talk about, she wants to have this conversation, but she feels like she's spiraling. She's just completely thrown by this dog thing. She decides she's going to go talk to Natasha. And you guys, we see Natasha. She looks beautiful. I think she's aged so well. She looks gorgeous. Hate the outfit they have her in. I think she has a stylish job. She would not be wearing that outfit. Carrie goes to talk to her because Carrie just can't leave this alone. She has to make everybody else miserable. She sits in this big room and shock her. Uh, Natasha's not coming out. Her assistant comes out and says she's in Rome. Well, obviously we know this is a lie because we saw Natasha a few minutes ago. So Charlotte and... Miranda decided to go have coffee, and Charlotte's like, oh, hey, I don't have my charger. Convenient. Miranda decides right at that right time she needs a muffin. So she goes to get a muffin, and Charlotte goes through her bag and finds all these empty alcohol bottles, little airplane bottles of Tito's. Dun, dun, dun. So things aren't going well for any of them. And Charlotte tries to get to the bottom of it to see what's going on with her. Says, hey, how are things with Steve? We find out Miranda and Steve aren't even a couple anymore. They're just roommates. They haven't had sex for years. Years. My gosh. Oh, so sad. Okay, so Carrie comes in. She is upset because, again, she couldn't talk to Natasha. And she feels like she needs to talk to her. So she's just trying to figure out how to get to her. You guys, this scene really was weird. They're up there, they're standing there, they're pointing up to Natasha, to the window, like saying, I know she's up there. They see her in the window, then they run away embarrassed. She already knows you got, or that Carrie was there. They know she's up there. What, what are we doing? Why did they take off running embarrassed? It's, I don't, I just thought that was a weird scene. Um, so... Yeah, so Miranda's laughing and overacting in this part, too, and saying, this is so bad, it's funny. Is it, though? Is it? Charlotte's phone ring, and Carrie calls. She's up early. They just keep talking about her not sleeping. Understandable. She went through a terrible loss. Keep going back to the not sleeping thing. Tonight's the night that Charlotte, Carrie, and Miranda are going to go say, see Che's show. For some reason, they decide they need to make Harry come in and pee in the middle of this conversation. Again, make it make sense. Why is he there? I used to like Harry in the original series. I didn't understand him at first, but I grew to like him because he was very good for Charlotte. But what's happening now? He even says, hey, a lot of men can't pull off a stream like that at my age. Count your blessings. So, again, we have to have 100 million billion references to how old everybody is. Yes, we've aged. It's... However many years later, we've aged, but do we have to beat us over the head with it? Why are you guys trying to make us feel bad? And by you guys, I mean the writers. Carrie's on the steps at this university. Miranda then comes up and says, you're the only 55-year-old sitting on the steps of the university. My God, again, here we are. Why are you doing this to us? Why are the writers treating us like we don't understand what it is to be 55? I'm not 55, but I can imagine, and... My God, I hope I'm not always saying, I'm so old, I'm so old, or I hope other people aren't saying that to me. It's just ridiculous. This is wild. It's like written by people who don't know how age works. Um, so there's Charlotte. Carrie calls her. She's saying she's a mess, and she's walking to this little place. This is, again, where we need the voiceover. We don't need her to call Charlotte and say, I'm going to go in here and pee and buy a coffee. 
You guys, we saw it caught coming from a mile away, right? Of course she was going to run into t to Natasha. It's funny how everybody keeps running into everybody in this New York City, right? This small little town, New York City. So uh, Carrie runs into her, and remember, Miranda kept running into her professor. Sure, that's a thing. Natasha's upset and says, what the F do you want from me? Uh, and they go back and forth. Carrie burns her hand, and in a huge metaphor, <laughs> Carrie's burnt herself over this, and Natasha comes and helps soothe her burn, and also helps soothe her internal burn by saying, listen, I don't know why you left me that money either. It doesn't make sense, and I'm really sorry for your loss. Now, I'm being very negative. I get it. I'm going to be positive here and say, I did like this. I like that they brought Natasha back. I like the storyline. It's weird that he left her a million dollars. I think it's cool that she said, I'm good, leave it at charity. Um, and that she, I'm glad that it wasn't something more what, nefarious, like that she and Big had been meeting up all along. She's happy. She's married. She's got two kids. All good. Also, I like that they dressed her way better in this scene than they did the first time we saw her. I like this outfit on her. I like it way better than Carrie's outfit. Then we go over to Che's comedy show. And can I just say, please make this stop. This is awful. She goes on and on about, I've dated a lot of uh, people. I've dated a lot of men. I've dated a lot of women. Cool. Great. Is this a comedy show? Uh, people are cheering for her. And she says, Cheer if I've F'd you. Cheer if you've F'd me. Cheer if you want me to F you. I half expected Miranda to jump up on stage and say, pick me, pick me. She's making jokes about non-binary characters and plenty to be sad about. And uh, I have a community. I have allies. I mean, it's just, it's a lot, you guys. Good for her. Great. This is not a comedy show. It wasn't funny. I don't understand. Uh... In this world, they were filming it for Netflix. It just didn't look, it looked like a pep rally, not so much a comedy show. Uh, it did seem to strike something with Charlotte when she was talking about being non-binary and Charlotte understanding what Rose is going through. Um, Miranda wants to go to this after party. The other girls aren't into it. Again, in overacting, Miranda points enthusiastically to her bracelet like, I've got one of these. Okay, I see where you guys are going with this. Thank you. Thanks for explaining it to me. Um, how about you show me and not tell me what's going to happen, right? So she ends up going to the VIP after party. Everybody else, you know, Carrie and Charlotte had left. Che sees her and says, Rambo, call back to the funeral scene. Miranda says, I keep hearing your voice saying, change. You are so amazing. You're like a comedy prophet. And out of nowhere, Che pulls out this marijuana and says, hey, I think you could use some weed. Do you mind if I shotgun you? I mean, right? Normal stuff that would totally happen at a bar, right? No? Not so much? Okay. Um, Charlotte and Carrie are in the car, and Charlotte brings up something's on my mind. It's about Miranda. I think she has a problem. They talk about her drinking and all the problems she's had lately, the bottles that she's found. Carrie asks Charlotte to just stop noticing things. Carrie goes home, she decides to take a walk, and you guys, she ended up in her old place. And I'll give them credit here, I'm glad this is where they left off. I hope that means she's going back home. I know that we're supposed to move forward, but I'm just saying, I like it. I'm glad she went here, I'm glad she kept that apartment. At least the ending didn't totally suck, the rest of it did. I don't know, I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> So that's my take on this episode. I'm dying to hear your thoughts. You guys were so wonderful last week letting me know. I want you to let me know again in the comments. You know, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? It's totally cool. I welcome all points of view. Just don't be rude. That's my only thing. Don't be rude to other people. I'll, you know, like, but if you want to express your opinion, I welcome that. And thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the support. You guys are wonderful. Please take a second and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I'll be doing Real Housewives of Miami. It should be coming up uh, tomorrow. I'm planning on it Friday. So stay tuned for that. And thank you guys so much for watching. Next week's Christmas. Merry Christmas. And if I... I'll, I'll get that episode out at some point. I don't know how that'll work, but I'll figure it all out. So thank you guys so much. Take care of yourselves. Be safe and healthy, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.